Hi everyone, happy Resurrection Sunday. So I've had a great time today uh, meditating on this topic, the new creation so it was created in Resurrection. And uh, I thought it was an appropriate topic for Resurrection Sunday. So um, I've got verses and some written down commentary, but um, I will add to it as well. Uh, so in Christ's resurrection, he created the new creation. In his death, he offered himself without spot to God through the eternal spirit, as Hebrews 9.14 says. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? After his resurrection, he took his blood into the Holy of Holies, the throne or uh, maybe I meant to put throne room, but anyway, um, the presence of God and presented it to God on the mercy seat. His flesh, his humanity was the first thing brought into the new creation. The Son of Man brought humanity, which is an element of the old creation, into the new creation by glorifying it. In our resurrection with Christ, we are brought into the new creation. The new creation contains an element of the old creation, humanity, but is purged of all sin and corruption, then glorified. Through his flesh, in death and resurrection, we are born into the new creation. Hebrews 10, 19-20 Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. So the new and living way that's, you know, of the new creation, his body, um, you know, his humanity was brought into the new creation that he created, um, you know, bringing... Uh, humanity and divinity in together as one um, and through through his body through his flesh uh, we are born into um, we are reborn we, we're born uh, in death and resurrection uh, into the new creation second corinthians 5 16 to 8 18 Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet not now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us, or to us, the ministry of reconciliation. So, um, yeah, we don't, you know, we, when Christ was on earth, he, he was flesh. Um, but we, even though he's, he brought his flesh, his, his humanity into the new creation, um, we don't know him after that humanity alone. We know him after the new creation, uh, the new creature, which is humanity and divinity in one. Romans 6, 4-5 Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So Christ was raised by the, the glory of the Father. So he, he's the glorified Christ. His flesh was glorified. Um, and we will also be glorified uh, at the rapture. Our bodies will follow in the same way. Um, but we are planted with him in his, his death. 
um, already we are in his likeness, the likeness of his death. And in spirit, we are in the likeness of his resurrection, but that will be manifested at the rapture, which I'm going to say further on. Newness of life, the, the living water, the life-giving spirit, is the life force and expression of the new creation. Jesus Christ in resurrection is both human and divine, and we in resurrection, the new creation, are like him, human and divine, uh, though yet to be manifested at the rapture, or yet to be fully manifested at the rapture. So I know it sounds dodgy to say we're divine, <laughs> but um, we are joined to the Lord as one, 1 Corinthians six seventeen. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So we have divinity joined to our spirit as one, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So we have an element of divinity living in us currently and our, our spirit is joined to that divinity. Um, our fleshly bodies are yet to catch up, but they will at the rapture. And 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made all to drink into one spirit. So by one spirit we're baptized into one body and we all drink of that one spirit. Um, and that is what I was saying before about newness of life, the, li the living water, the life-giving spirit. Um, the spirit is given to us as a, as a drink, as the water of life that we, we drink in the new creation. And he sustains us. Romans 1, 3-4, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So Christ um, is the seed of David according to the flesh. And he, um, oh, he's many things, the seed of the woman, um, seed of Abraham, seed of David and this is his this is him as the the son of man um, the element of humanity that was to be brought into um, in into the union of the father and the son and the spirit um, and to bring us into the new creation um, so he he is the son of man but he's declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So in his resurrection, um, it's, it's a combination of him being the seed of David according to the flesh and the son of God with power. And sort of going on to this topic of the son of man, um, Acts seven fifty five to fifty six. Um, Stephen, just before he got stoned, was telling um, stoned to death. Um, he was telling, um, you know, basically preaching to people, and he said, "Well, it says, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God." And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So this shows that the humanity of Jesus has been taken up into heaven and placed at the right hand of God. Um, not only is he the Son of God, he's the, or the Son of Man, he's the Son of God. And they are both brought together together. Um, in one man, um, Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God. And John 3 talks about the Son of Man as well. Um, if I have told you of you earthly things and ye believe not, how, she, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? 
and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that come that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So the context here is Jesus is telling Nicodemus about being born again and talking about the spirit being like the, the wind in the trees, the, leaf, the leaves, rustling the leaves. And he's like, How, I, I tell you in earthly terms, but um, if you don't believe that, how, how can I tell you of heavenly things? Um, and, and this next part is basically him saying, I am the representative of God. Um, and there is basically no one else to testify of heavenly things. If you don't believe me, who are you going to believe? You, there's no one else to believe. Um, and, and so he's saying, uh, so it says the Son of Man which is in heaven. Well, the Son of Man is the manifestation of, of Jesus Christ, um, the Son of God in his humanity on earth, like his incarnation. He was incarnated as a man. So in actual fact, he hadn't yet gone to heaven as the son of man. But, um, so it's a bit funny to say which is in heaven. And a lot of people have various ideas about what this means. But I think at least one, one interpretation that I think makes sense is is that um, he's basically saying, I am, uh, I am, I am the son of God. So I am divine and I am human as well. And we are one. No, not we are one. What am I saying? Well, as in John ten thirty, the verse just below I've written, um, it says, I am, I and my father are one. So being divine, the son of God, um, he is, he is divine and him and his father are one, but he's also the son of man. He's both. So he, it's, it's like he's in heaven. I mean, the father is in heaven. So simultaneously he is on earth, but as as one with the Father, he's also in heaven, and he's divine and he's human, um, but he's there to speak the truth of God to people like Nicodemus. And if they don't believe him, who are they? They're not going to believe anything because um, he's he's he has the truth and he is sharing the truth with them, and he is the witness of the truth. Um, so yeah. Sorry, that's a bit of a tangent. Um, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. It, as Moses lifted up the serpent, um, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. So you could... S I'm not entirely sure of this one, but, you know, he was lifted up on the cross um, so that, you know, we, we see him on the cross and believe in him. But he was also lifted up to heaven, ascended to heaven, um, and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father and that's also, you know, where we look to him and believe on his, the work he did on the cross. So he is the Son of Man and the Son of God and Hebrews 2 also talks about the Son of Man. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak, but one in a certain place testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visitest him thou madest him a little lower than the angels they made him human um, thou crownedst him with glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all the, all in subjection under him he left nothing that is not put under him 
but now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned, crowned with glory and honour, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. So the, he, he is incarnated. He, he was, he's the divine son of God who was incarnated as the son of man, made a little lower than the angels and God the Father crowned him with glory and honour and put all things in subjection under his feet. He tasted death for every man and in his, in his death uh, and resurrection he brings many sons unto glory. So we are made sons of God uh, by faith through uh, in, by faith in the blood in Jesus Christ um, and we're brought into the new creation and born um, born of the spirit and um, made sons of God and sons unto glory we shall be glorified and then there's um, some revelation references to the son of man which is mind blowing Revelation 1, 13 to 15. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about with, about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were like white wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So this is referring to Jesus Christ, um, he, the Son of Man, but it's also like the new creation because uh, in verse 15, his voice as the sound of many waters. So the body of Christ, the new creation, is made up of many members with Jesus as the head. And um, and we speak with him the truth. Um, I don't know, this is just coming from nowhere, but um, you know, our spirit testifies, or his spirit testifies with our spirit that we are sons of God. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just making this up, but it's, I think there's something about us, you know, speaking the same thing as Christ. And um, so when he speaks, it's, it's like the whole body of Christ is speaking. I don't know, maybe I'm making that up. But the, the words, um, the sound of many waters, that's also in Revelation 19, which is definitely talking about a member of the body of Christ. But first, oops, um, first I want to read Romans 8, 29 to 30. For whom he did foreknow, um, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, um, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So this also speaks of uh, the members of the body of Christ. Um, so the, those who believe are predestined, predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. So he, he has been glorified, his, his human body, um, his incarnated human body has been glorified. Um, he is both divine and, and human and we 
uh, are to be conformed to the image of his son. So, you know, what you read in Revelation 1 there about, you know, the glorious um, features of him, um, you know, the what he's wearing and the, 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 his hair and his eyes and his skin um, and the voice of many, the sound of many waters, we're, we're being, going to be conformed to that image. And so, I mean, we will be u- unique, each of us, but we're also in the likeness of his resurrection and being conformed to his image. Um, it's not just how we look, but, you know, what we are in spirit as well. Um, but yeah, we've been, so for those whom he did predestinate, he called and he justified and he will also glorify us and then we will, really will be like him. And then Revelation 19, and a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and uh, and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honour to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife, his wife hath made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So in verse 5, a voice came out of the throne. That sounds like Jesus, except it's not Jesus, although it is a member of the body of Christ. So it's, it's like it is, but it isn't. Um, and he's saying to praise our God. And, and then you hear all, all the people whether they're in the body of Christ or, you know, tribulation saints or um, those who were saved before the church or, you know, anyone who who is in heaven at this time. um, They all, as one voice, um, worship God, but they were a great multitude um, as the voice of many waters and mighty thunderings. And then, of course, down in verse 10, he, John thinks that for some reason that this, um, this person who speaks, um, the voice that came out from the throne, he, he worships him as though he is God. But he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm one of your brothers. You know, I'm fellow servant. Don't do that. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not Jesus speaking. It's... Um, it's a member of the body of Christ, the new creation. Um, and he has the voice of, of many waters. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show you all of this um, that I've been thinking about today. Um, and yeah, just reading those revelation things, it's just like, Wow, can't wait until until that happens. It's just very exciting. Um, where what's the one that gets that's most exciting? What was it? Hang on. Um, For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife his wife hath made herself ready. I can't wait to get to that point that would be so good it's like all of this that we're going through right now it will be over 
and we'll never have to deal with it again. Um, all the sin and the corruption will be purged from our flesh and we'll ha our bodies will be glorified. We will be um, like Jesus. Um, we'll be as one and we're about to get married to Jesus Christ and um, and as he says down the bottom, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yeah, it's just going to be amazing. I'm kind of a bit speechless. Anyway, I hope that blessed you and have a nice um, Resurrection Sunday. Talk to you later. Bye.